In this video, we are going to be talking about the anatomy of the spike protein on the coronavirus. And understanding the nuances of this protein are very important to us right now because it will help us develop better vaccines, screening kits, and cures in order to fight COVID-19. And so every single coronavirus is coated with these spike proteins. These spike proteins are heavily involved in how this virus is infecting host cells. And so what I've done here is if we were to zoom in on just one of these spike proteins, I have something that looks like this. And each one of these spike proteins is composed of domains and specifically three domains. The outermost domain is referred to as the receptor binding domain. The receptor binding domain has the job of sticking to something referred to as the ACE2 receptor on host cells that it is about to infect as well as getting cleaved off in order to activate underlying domains inside of this spike protein. And so what happens when this coronavirus, if we're to zoom out a little bit, is infecting a host cell is that one of the spike proteins is going to essentially anchor itself onto the ACE2 receptor of a host cell and an additional spike protein on this coronavirus is going to actually do the work of fusing the membrane of the coronavirus into the host membrane. The reason that we wanna do a fusion event in this case in order to actually infect the host cell is that all of the virus's genetic payload, the RNA, is inside of this membrane. So to get this genetic payload into the host, we've got to fuse these two things. You can kind of think of them like bubbles that are coming together. They've got to, something's got to help pull these two bubbles together and actually infect your host cell. And so one of the spike proteins is using its receptor binding domain, which I'm illustrating with this little blue rubber band right here to stick onto one of the ACE2 receptors to anchor the virus onto the host cell. And then an additional spike protein on the coronavirus is going to have some kind of membrane bound protease on the host cell. It's actually gonna come by and it's going to take off the receptor binding domain like this. And so taking off the receptor binding domain from the spike protein of the coronavirus is a very important event because it activates the fusion domain of the protein, of the spike protein on the coronavirus. So after I took off the cap, basically now, uh, this coronavirus can begin its job of trying to now fuse its membrane onto the host membrane. So after we take off the receptor binding domain, what happens is the uh, fusion domain will begin to open up and it will begin to form something that's referred to as a pre-hairpin. And what this means is that you basically get these things that are able to stick into the host's membrane. And the host's membrane is hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like water. It's very much like olive oil. And so the reason that you were capping this whole thing in the first place is because this is also hydrophobic and it's scared of water. So after we took off the cap, we have our fusion domain now open up and basically extend and launch itself into the host's membrane. And we've got our viral membrane right here, host membrane right here. And now we've kind of created this bridge between the two and so what happens next is that the fusion domain is going to actually begin folding itself back, which unfortunately I can't really do with these, but for the sake of this illustration, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start like basically pulling these two membranes together. You've got your host membrane and your viral membrane, and these two things will get closed together and basically like two bubbles getting squeezed together, eventually they're just gonna fuse. And once they've fused, all of the virus's genetic material, that RNA to actually make a bunch more progeny of the coronavirus are now going to get put into the host cell where they can hijack ribosomes and whatever other machinery they're gonna need in order to replicate themselves and make tons of progeny. And so once we fuse the two membranes together, the virus has now infected the host cell and uh, that host cell is, for all intents and purposes, now a virus-making factory. And so, although this is scary, it is very good that we know so much about this process because what it means is that we will be able to develop vaccines in order to kind of figure out, you know, every step along the way of, you know, binding onto that ACE2 receptor, having this fusion domain stick into the host membrane. Every single step of this process is another opportunity for us to design a potential vaccine or a cure for preventing infections from the coronavirus. 
And in addition to that, one of the things that researchers have found that the makes this virus particularly infectious to humans is the fact that these uh, receptor binding domains, the, the rubber band basically on the outside of the spike protein, is able to be cleaved by a large variety of proteases, whereas in the SARS virus, CoV-1, that receptor binding domain had was much more picky in which proteases could be used to actually take it off. So because the receptor binding domain on the spike protein of the coronavirus is so much more easily removed by a wider variety of proteases, it makes the coronavirus much more able to infect a broader variety of cells much more quickly than we've seen in the past. And this is part of the reason why it is even more infectious than the SARS virus. Um, so this is all stuff that I hope you guys find interesting and useful. And I really believe that the more we know about the virus and the more we learn about it, the more less scary it is. And I hope that you all stay safe and please wash your hands. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you next time.